Uganda faces low agricultural growth rates that are currently below the average population rate of 3.2% per annum and a target rate of 6% per annum that was set in 2003 by the African Union. The low growth rates highlight the challenges of reversing and declining per capita agricultural production and eradicating poverty in Uganda. Livestock and livestock products play an important role in income generation and are a source of high-quality protein to many households. Uganda is the largest consumer of pork in sub-Saharan Africa. Domestic demand for pork and piggery-related products is high. Economic growth in the country is expected to be achieved by removing major constraints that prevent the private sector from investing in different agricultural product value chains, including that of live pigs and pig products. Livestock contributes about 15% of the agricultural GDP. There has been a 3% increase in the number of livestock and poultry in Uganda, and this increase is attributed to the routine interventions in the livestock subsector that has helped to control animal diseases and improve the livestock production system. About 4.5 million households in Uganda rear at least one kind of livestock or poultry. The number of pigs increased significantly from 0 0.19 million in 1980 to 1.7 million in 2002 and to 3.2 million in 2008. Pig production in Uganda is widespread and appears to be increasing at a high rate. The research is not as developed as other enterprises. It has not been um, of focus at national level until very recently. It's partly because of the perception towards pigs, you know, either the religious and cultural attachments. So as we speak now, pigs are not a priority animal, even at ministry level. And at narrow level, it has recently been recognized and is being paid attention to. While the consumption of other livestock meat, such as bovine meat, is reducing, that of pork is increasing. Pork ranks fourth in terms of per capita consumption. The increase in pork consumption in the country is attributed to the increase in size of human population, level of urbanization, purchasing power, and change in tastes and preferences. It is only pig meat, among other types of livestock meat, that continues to register a steady increase in the level of per capita consumption. A research background started with developing feeds, working on feeding systems for pigs, managing piglets. I remember um, my undergraduate research was on uh, trying to get piglets to suckle less so that their mothers can conceive early or faster. They were taking up to two months after weaning their piglets to, to start uh, conceiving again. So we're working with Professor Mtetika to see how can we reduce the intensity of suckling, managing the sows, so that as soon as they win, they can actually conceive. So we are coming up with an arrangement of concurrent circling with conception. The number of pigs have increased steadily since 1991. Pigs number in Uganda increased from 0 0.67 million in 1991 to 1.4 million in 1997 to 1.6 in 2001 to 2.3 million in 2005 and 6 and 3.2 million by 2008 and keeps increasing. The position of pigs as a priority livestock enterprise among Ugandan households that keep at least one of the various animals improved from a fourth position to a third position after cows and goats in the last 10 years. The average number of pigs owned is highest 1.1 pigs for livestock farmers in urban areas than is the case 0 0.7 pigs for farmers in rural areas. Ugandans consume pork. Ugandans really consume pork and we love that that today an average Ugandan actually consumes four kilos of pork in a year. China it has over 400 million pigs. We have four million. And, and the whole world has about 800 million pigs. China has about half of the world's population. China is consuming 40 kilos per person per year of pork. We are consuming four. So the figures are almost uncomparable, but we can catch the rest of the world. So far, y Uganda is doing well on the continent, but we want to see it become better. Pig keeping in Uganda is categorized in three basic production systems. 
One, intensive where pigs are kept housed all the time and provided with feed, water and protection from extreme weather. Two, semi-intensive where pigs are partly housed and partly kept outdoors on the pasture. Three, extensive small-scale subsistence production systems where pigs are kept outdoor to freely move around the homestead as they feed on their own or tethered. The adoption of intensive total confinement system of feeding is increasing, probably due to such factors as land scarcity and improvement in access to information related to commercial production of pigs. Most pigs in Uganda have no distinct breeds and tend to be cross-breeds of a variety of breeds introduced in the 1960s from other countries. There's limited information on the type of specific breeds and breeding practices in the different pig production systems. Pigs in Uganda can be white, black, or black and white. This is in contrast to the black color of the so-called local pigs, which are considered to be indigenous. There are no commercial breeding services for pigs in Uganda. The use of artificial insemination, AI, in pigs is still very limited. Farmers rely on natural mating using the breeds available in their farms or within their neighborhoods. Most farmers recognize the importance of selecting carefully the sows and boars for mating in order to minimize inbreeding, upgrade their animals, and control diseases. Many times, the availability of high-quality boars limits the selection of options. The selection of pig breeds is often based on various characteristics, namely the ability to grow faster, produce a large litter, and the nature of feed requirements. Lack of good breeding stock and planned breeding schemes for smallholder pig farmers has resulted in a high level of inbreeding, thus leading to a small litter size, poor growth rates, and small animal size, especially in the so-called local pigs. In this sense, there is need to put more emphasis on selection of good piglets for reproduction, improvement of breeding programs, and the use of artificial insemination with selected boars in order to boost yields and minimize genetic disorders. So we have farmers who are very interested in the black pig. However much they keep the white pigs, they still talk about the black pig. They say they want the black pig. So we want to understand better. How can we improve this pig so that it can remain there? Because farmers just, some, some people say it resists disease, you know, it manages better, you know, poor feeding. That's what we hear. Some people think it is even better at the pork. The pork is better. We have not verified this. So however much we as researchers have ignored it, you know. So we're talking about the large white, the land race, the cambra, the duroc. The farmers are sticking to this black pig in many places. So uh, that's another area where we could go to see how better can we improve this pig. Yeah. Because farmers are saying all kinds of good things about it, but we don't seem to have enough information about it. As with any type of livestock animals, there are challenges which spark off the research which Naro carries out. So the challenges were in housing, the challenges were in feeding, uh, farmers giving grass, tethering anim uh, the, their pigs and thinking they will grow. And then there were problems of diseases because when the animals are tethered on a tree, then they're interacting with the wild pigs, they're interacting with sick pigs, they're getting diseases. So there are problems with the breeds. When we started, the, 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 the farmers were keeping only the black pigs. They still like them, but many farmers now are managing the, the improved breeds. So low productivity was a problem. Uh, was a problem. Uh, the growth rates were very low, and then survival was also low. Piglets dying, somebody gets 10 piglets, and only six are wind. So these were challenges. Which are research, you know, there has been already research on, on swine fever, but I think we are yet to resolve and find a solution to this. And then also getting the pigs to grow a bit faster. Yeah, because when you tell farmers you can get your pig to reach market at six months, they think it is a dream. We have done it. We, I've been a farmer of pigs myself. I've sold the pigs at 80 kilos at seven months. That's the carcass weight. There's a lot of information already generated on managing pigs, uh, feeding, breeding, marketing that the farmers can use. So I think uh, going forward, there is a need for capacity building. The farmers need to be organized better.
yeah, the grouping, group marketing, you know, uh, sharing of information, so advocacy, you know, uh, but specifically on research, more research on I was talking about disease management. There are still diseases which are a big problem. And then uh, better ways of nutrition. Uh, the, the diet, the feeds we have, their utilization by pigs. You know, uh, whereas we say the pig is, is a poor man's cow, it's actually not anywhere near a cow. A pig is a pig. A pig cannot eat grass and grow. So getting feeds that pigs can utilize better, I think that is another direction. We need to think of new things that we can feed pigs because pigs are competing with human beings. The price of maize goes up, you almost can't feed a pig, just like you can't feed a chicken. So uh, finding alternative feeds for pigs is going to remain big on the research agenda. With all properly executed research programs, solutions must be achieved. So what strides have been taken in the area of piggery under the Naro and Makere University project? And so we have moved to developing diets for piglets supported by Naro. We have worked on um, uh, distributing, promoting the Cambra breed, which was introduced about uh, 15 years ago. So we took this breed to Western Uganda, we took this breed to Kalangala district under narrow support. That was another project, which I think was very successful. The breed was received, farmers uh, multiplied the breed and distributed to other farmers. I think we distributed over 500 pigs in the life of that CGS project. And so uh, we have also moved on to manage swine fever not by treating the animal, but by managing the environment of the animal, uh, confinement, and you know, uh, training on biosecurity, uh, restricting movements of animal keepers. And now, the latest project which has just ended, where we are developing a special diet for piglets that don't get milk from the mother, for some reason. Sometimes the mothers don't have milk, sometimes they are sick, and then when they are newly born, the farmer has nothing to give the piglets. So we came up with this diet, which is low cost. Uh, you know, somebody will say, why don't you give them milk? Why don't you give them all kinds of concentrates uh, which are imported? They are very expensive. And then I think one of our groundbreaking works is on uh, commercializing artificial insemination of pigs, whereby we have been telling farmers, keep improved breeds, keep these very nice exotic breeds, but these breeds are not easy to get. You want to get them in Gulu, you want to get them in Soroti. So what we have done in this project is to actually keep boas, manage them, collect semen, process it, distribute it to the entire country. So we are now servicing over 20 districts. So with the narrow support, um, we have been able to research on the best way to manage the boas, the best way to package the semen, and the quantities that are desirable to cause maximum conception and the best way to cause the farmers to appreciate the technology. So as we speak, uh, we, are, we have been running almost now a year since the project closed, but we are still running. Farmers are ordering the semen. We train the inseminators who actually are receiving the semen. Some of them even come here in this lab to pick the semen and go and use in the community. Narrow research projects are focused on developing practical solutions to find out how to create health for pigs and wealth for pig farmers in the country by improving the utilization of sweet potato and other root and tuber crops residue for pig feeds. Led by the International Potato Center, SIP, the team is comprised of a wide range of organizations, each bringing their own expertise and skills to the project, including the International Livestock Research Institute, National Agricultural Research Organization, VEDCO, Chain Uganda, Iowa State University, Makere University, Uganda Matters University, and Pig Production and Marketing Limited. Farmers have always relied on fish, fish, fish as a protein source. But we have identified low-cost, uh, non-conventional protein sources, you know, which farmers can actually use. So now we, are, we can use insects, uh, we can use um, animal, um, animal waste, process them and make sure they are safe for the pigs. You know, we have plant, uh, plants. Sweet potato is a common plant, which is very, very good. You know, 
So with the support of the International Livestock Research Institute, we have developed silage made out of sweet potato, roots, stem and leaf. And this silage is virtually a balanced food. The way we say milk is a balanced food. This, this feed can be taken by growing pigs, by mature pigs. It's only that the young piglets would need slightly more protein. But the, the, the protein provided by this diet is good. Sweet potato is a nutritious option for pig feeds. The root contains carbohydrates and the vines contain protein, meaning it is a very good choice of feed for livestock. NARO carries out research to determine the quality of silage prepared from sweet potato vines to determine the nutrient digestibility of sweet potato silage in the growing pigs and to determine the growth performance of pigs on sweet potato silage. Not only could feeding pigs with sweet potato vines help to decrease on farm waste of sweet potato vines and create animal feeds for pigs, but could really help farmers bridge the feed gap that is common during the dry season, which leads to a dramatic increase in the cost of pig feeds. This would really help farmers, especially smallholder farmers, who are very vulnerable to price fluctuations. Also on the breeding side, we hope we can find better ways we are trying to develop a, a way of increasing the lifespan of the semen. When we collect this semen from the pigs, they, it can't live for long, you know, four days maximum. And we are thinking if it can extend that life, uh, as they have done in other countries, because unlike cattle and other animals where you can get the semen and freeze it, pig semen can't be frozen. So, but what they have done in other parts of the world is to increase the, the life. So that if we produce our doses here, we can send them to Arua, we can send them to Gulu, and they can stay there long, maybe beyond a week. Pig Phase 2 is an ongoing research project in the Department of Agricultural Production, College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences, Macquarie University, funded by Competitive Grant Scheme from National Agricultural Research Organization. The project has trained over 50 artificial insemination technicians from 12 districts. The 12 districts are Masaka, Kayunga, Lira, Gulu, Hoima, Jinja, Mitiana, Mpinji, Mbale, Luero, Soroti, and Chiriandongo. In 2012, pig artificial insemination started in Wakiso district. However, there are very few trained personnel in pig AI. One of the objectives of Diverse Pig Project is to train AI technicians at sub-counties ready to offer AI services to farmers in their communities. NARO advocates for artificial insemination for any serious pig farmer for a variety of reasons. Key among them is cost. AI is way cheaper than keeping a boar for service on a farm. Maintaining a mature boar on a farm requires 3 kilos of food per day. Since a kilo goes for about 800 shillings, it comes to 2,400 a day and that's 72,000 in a month. After serving a female, this boar takes another 6 months to serve and this cost can go up to 432,000 in feeds. However, this cost does not include the cost at which you bought the boar as a piglet, usually about 100,000 shillings, and the cost incurred from feeding that boar to its required maturity of 8 months when it will be old enough to appropriately service a female. If you add the cost of water and vet care this pig needs from the time it is acquired through the months it waits to serve a female, then a piggery is simply making losses by keeping a boar for the sole purpose of mating. A dose of artificial insemination, on the other hand, goes for about 50,000 shillings, which is far more cost effective than keeping a boar. We are at the boar stud at Cabanuro University Farm. At this place, we collect semen from these boars. Semen collection in, in uh, pigs is collected uh, using a method called the glove hand method. That's the method. Uh, but you also have to prepare uh, things to, to use, like the collection cup. You need um, uh, the filter filter the gel plug and also the semen uh, back. We collect semen from the collection pen as you see it here. In the collection pen we have what you call a dummy sow. A dummy sow is something that looks like a, 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 a sow in, on, on heat. So when you get the boa, 
mounts on the on the dummy saw and then you are able to collect semen. In Uganda, value addition in the live pig and pig meat products is largely limited. About 98% of pigs are sold as live animals and are slaughtered for pork that is consumed with limited or no value addition. The potential for value addition on pig meat products is however considered to be vast in the country. The level of productivity, processing and upgrading of actors along the chain is still very low in terms of production technology that is used, access to the market and linkages, organizations and structure between various stakeholders, especially those that provide a supportive service to pig producers and upcoming processors. Lack of organization of farmers, traders, processors and other actors in the value chain creates inefficiencies that open doors for exploitation and poor quality products. There are other key constraints that continue to affect pig farmers such as 1. Poor structure of pig industry reflected on many traders participating at each and every stage of the supply chain, high transaction costs, lack of capital, lack of improved transport, and limited access to information which leaves the majority of smallholder farmers out of the higher end markets of pig products. This justifies the need to enforce standards on the handling of live pigs and quality pig products. 2. Pig farmers are poorly organized and are therefore unable to utilize the advantages of collective marketing and high bargaining power. This limits farmers' efforts to upgrade into various pig-related market exchanges at different knots of the value chain. Pig farmers also face many technical and management problems that limit productivity while increasing the cost of production. This also limits their ability to keep improved breeds. An improvement in pork markets has contributed to enhanced production, but the market price is still not good enough to encourage and reward high-quality pork products. Looking at the pig, there is a way the farmers, and particularly the women farmer, there is a way they really benefit from the pig. You know, the pig is the animal that can help a woman earn an income anytime. It's an animal that men are not so much after. So a woman will rear the animal, sell it, and the man in the home will not complain. So in terms of livelihood, in terms of income, for an average family, the pig is a good animal. In fact, uh, uh, I think the statement, the pig is a poor man's cow, is not only true, but very, very true. The pig is almost more than a cow. You know, you, a farmer owns a cow, but is a slave of the cow. But so I would say having worked with all these animals as a researcher, I think the pig has a special place. Because Elizabeth Nora Nabikov Tiagaba and Sangi Wana Kweru, my district here, which is so. Tauni Kanso Chila, Nkola Makerere University, Nikila Likofisa, Nkola Mo Department, Bajita Pathology Department, Molago Medical School. Nime Mere Yange Yokuria, Ninoru Suku, Nimakasori, Umonde, Mwogo. No Kuruda, MBZ. Now, now, what are Ghana and Yunganji and Peter Momasao Eric? When I quarter Ghana and Yo, Najana servicing MBZ Zang. Now, Uno Murundi Katibua servicing a work sat. And Kuru Yakaji servicing a Mirundi Ebidi. Katino no Moala. The Yembis is their so cocoa servicing and I am the Nay Yasala Nam serving Nayam servicing. All work one to sit in a no me young Chinkalu Vidizo Kutambu Zembizi Nature Kubiri Nachizula and he means a jenji to Alan Yizo Kujayo Burwadi Echidala Katula Bakuno Kuchalo, Botuali and Bizi Yonti Bojuaxi. Well, you know, Jituadira came made. Katina Echidala Obu Atre Obu would the Mbasibulina. Nayenga told you Waba Zen Ajuaksa, the Chibachin Yamba. Mbam Ponya Zeb, your nebby, your Buruad day, if your Kutua lady and Mary, if your Jitambos and this is Omchim Basin Yangu Kutambosa. O Kujisiva or Kolachi. O Russo Chitakamuni Saint. Nayuan Ungan Quarter Saint, a woman and Mutan Mugajango Kolachi. Expensive magic and desako. And Jaulo Jensen's Okolaba. Zinembizi eza 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 mpiso zikula ku speed nene okusinga zili kubanga zili olusi nenu mebera ambi business yembizi nnunje sente mwezili nze ndo zanti 
bwabanga dalu omulimu ekintu akyetaga kubanga abantu abasinga embizi bazenyalo bujama na yenze ndoza nti ekintu kisinzira nawe bwochi kwata kubanga ebyange biyumbo bilaba byabuli jjo na ye mfubo okulaba nti tebiwunya okoze sacho olina otandi asobola okutandika ne mbizemu na ye nasobola okuta okujiwa kwe byo ye byakola ki kuba mbizi ne mmere joli deko ne kulema ojijiwa ne kola ki Nigeria Thank you for joining us for another episode of Agricultural Research for Transformation. Please reach out to us on our social media platforms through Twitter, Facebook and YouTube at Naro Uganda. We would like to hear from you. Thank you.